The turtles are heroes no matter where they end up, even if it's not Earth anymore. Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into the digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read it dramatically back to you, all durations of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Don't forget to support this great industry by clicking the links down below and purchasing these comics yourself online or at your local comic book store. On the planet Neutrino, the war is raging on. Rockets land in the city, destroying various emplacements and killing many of the soldiers. It's an attack that has gone on for 10 days. And though all of the soldiers of this war have fought Krang and his men valiantly, it appears that they are losing. And the king knows this as he turns to Commander Dask and he tells him to retrieve Honeycut. They need the scientist back now. He is the last remaining hope for the Neutrino people. Meanwhile, in New York City, Donatello is setting up their new base of operations, while the others are dealing with the fallout of the recent events. Mikey is looking over the letter that his friend gave him, telling him that he can't be around the turtles anymore. Raph is lifting to get rid of his anger, and Leo is still meditating over injuring a fellow turtle by the name of Slash. But Splinter calls a family meeting, which includes pizza for everyone. Mikey looks at Casey and he asks if his friend was there, and Casey tells him, Nah, Mikey, sorry. Pizza was outside like always. Splinter informs the family that he has seen their friendship strained recently and his sons have been tested. He doesn't want to see anything else bad happen to them. He has noticed that their enemies are building alliances on greed, but the family here is stronger than any of their enemies and they need to prepare for what's coming. Over at the edge of the war, Krang is informing Stockman that he doesn't want to betray Krang. And in order to not do so, he's going to need to complete the Technodrome soon. Stockman tells him that he can't complete the Technodrome in the timeline that Krang is giving him. But Krang tells him, Don't worry, soon you will have a robot capable of completing the Technodrome. And then I will conquer as many worlds as I can, starting with Earth. Over in the Foot Clan compound, Shredder has a new plan that he would like to put into motion. He calls over his daughter and asks her why she has not brought him Leonardo yet. He demanded him weeks ago, and she tells him that she is getting the necessary elements to acquire Leonardo. But she wanted to get some more of that alien ooze that they've been using to create more mutants. Back in New York City though, April goes to have a night out with one of the scientists at Stock Gen, the facility that she's interning at and the guys behind all of these mutations, while Casey Jones and the turtles watch in the shadows. After some small talk, April begins to ask Chet about the real reason she asked him to coffee in the park in the middle of the night. She's not blind, she's seen all of Stock Gen's secret labs and such and she knows what's going on over there, or at least she thinks she does. Chet plays dumb, but she goes on to explain that she's seen the ninjas, the missing turtles, and the super smart rat and the green serum that he saw. She's trying to get answers out of him so that the turtles and Splinter can figure out a plan. But everything that she just said takes Chet back a little. You shouldn't know about the green serum, April. That's when she takes her chance. If we're hurting people, Chet, I need to know so that I can stop it. And Chet tells her that the last thing he wants to do is hurt people. So just as he's getting ready to explain, there's a foom and soldiers from the Neutrino War appear in front of them. Commander Dask sees Chet and he tells him, Professor Honeycutt, it's time to go home. The turtles and Casey have no idea who that is, but they don't trust it. So they run in prepared to fight it out. The soldiers begin firing at the turtles and Casey runs in grabbing April and getting her out of there in a hurry. Commander Dask grabs Honeycutt and he tells his soldiers to teleport them out now. And then in another foom, the soldiers, Honeycutt, and the turtles are gone, leaving April and Casey guessing as to what just happened. What just happened was that the turtles were warped to the middle of the war on Neutrino. Commander Dask shouts out that Command Central is under attack and the turtles begin dodging lasers as they come shooting in at them. As the commander and his team run inside of the building to save the king, the turtles follow behind them and then Raph grabs Commander Dask, putting a side to his throat, asking, where are we? Das calls him a moron, asking if he wants to get everyone killed as even more lasers fly over their heads. And Raph asks him, weren't you trying to kill us a few minutes ago? What? You attacked us? Yeah, after you showed up waving your guns around and threatening April and Chet. Who is Chet? We were sent here for Honeycut. Who? The Fugatoid. The what now? But before they can continue explaining, more lasers go off around them and the turtles decide it's time to fight back. Raph and Mikey jump in first and then Leonardo finishes them off stopping the immediate threat. Dask looks at everyone and he tells them, look, I told you we're not here to kill you. Now Krang's thugs will be here any minute. So you can either come with us or you can stay here. Leo tells them, fine, but we want answers after this. The group presses forward, dropping more of the guards until they get to the room with the royalty, and Dask shouts, They have the princess! Mikey Caesar begins to twirl his nunchucks, and he shouts, Let's do this! Charging right in there. They run out into the open with Mikey taking point, and he runs full speed, jumping up into the oncoming lasers, and he lands on their ship. Once inside, Mikey starts beating back the stone soldiers, and then he grabs the princess, and he jumps off the ship. But while he did save her, her mother and father were taken. The whole group goes back to the command center now that Krang's forces have left with the king and the queen and they explain everything to the turtles finally. This planet is Neutrino and Krang has been trying to conquer it for a while now. Chet is actually Professor Honeycutt and the man stuck in a robot called a Fugatoid. Krang's people have continually fought in wars and they've ruined their own planet in their expansion. And now he has a new plan. 
They kidnapped Honeycutt and they threatened his family if he didn't help them figure out how to save their planet. And Honeycutt couldn't do it, so their planet died and the Supreme Commander died along with it. Krang took the survivors and their ooze to Earth, where he placed them all in stasis until he could remake their planet in place of Earth. But then the Resistance fighters broke in and saved Honeycutt, angering Krang and he invaded their city. During all of this, Professor Honeycutt's family was killed and he was fused with a fugitoid robot. And once on Earth, he took up the identity of Chet, the scientist that April knows. The princess steps forward and tells Honeycutt, and that's why they went for him, because they finished a weapon that could end this war and they need him to complete it. So Dask tells him that he's more worried about what Krang is going to do with the king and the queen. Right on cue, Krang radios in telling everyone that he demands the fugitoid. And Mikey is grossed out about how pink and squishy Krang is. He explains that he's in the royal palace and if they don't bring him the fugitoid, he will kill both the king and the queen. Professor Honeycutt sees no other option and he decides that he's going to surrender himself, but everyone tells him that that's not going to happen. The princess tells Honeycutt that they need him to complete the weapon so that they can win this war. It's what her parents would have wanted. But Donatella tells everyone, hold on, if Krang is going to invade Earth, we want to help. The princess agrees since they saved her life, so Donnie goes to help Honeycutt with the weapon, and Leo comes up with a plan to rescue the king and the queen, ninja style. So everyone prepares with Donnie helping build the weapon, and Leo, Mikey, Raph, and the princess and her guards all get ready to assault the royal palace. While this is going on, Shredder's daughter is getting ready to make her own plan work by breaking onto the island where Krang's people are being kept. She then cuts out one of the stasis pods, stealing the green ooze, killing one of Krang's survivors. Shredder will have Leonardo. But we'll get to that next time. On the planet, the battle begins with a full frontal assault with tanks blowing up everything so that they can provide a distraction. As the palace shakes, Krang can't believe it. They would dare face me in open battle rather than give up the robot? Full counter assault! With everyone charging into battle, Raph leads the charge because he's not really the sneaky type. He leaves that to Mikey and Leo who are sneaking into the palace moving towards the throne room. Back on the battlefield, Raph and Dask beat the tar out of various thugs, even dropping a tank with a rocket launcher. While on the throne room, everyone is in direct combat with Krang and he morphs his arms into guns, opening fire on everyone. Leo jumps in, cutting off one of Krang's arms before getting punched into a wall by his other arm. And Mikey jumps over the laser fire, landing right in front of one of the stone thugs and beating on them while Leo backflips back into combat with Krang until Krang throws Leo into Mikey, knocking them both down, and then he readies his laser arm to finish them off. Meanwhile, back on the battlefield, Raph and Dask are happy that they bombed the tank, only to see a giant robot there instead. Mikey and Leo leap out of the way of Krang's shot just in time, and with that opening, the princess blows off the rest of the arm that Leo cut off, infuriating Krang! You die, you insolent brat! And he shoots at her, pissing off Mikey, who jumps back in and gives it his all as he knocks Krang back until he's thrown aside. Leo calls it. Don't quit, Mikey, and they both jump back in together, and then the bodyguards open fire on Krang. Back on the battlefield, Raph and Dask make a run for it since it's a giant robot. Luckily, Donnie and Honeycutt finish the weapon, and they've launched it. As it hovers overhead, it sends down a signal that deactivates all of Krang's army's weapons, giant robots included, while leaving the good guys' guns fully functional. They all walk into the throne room where Krang still has Mikey pinned down, and Honeycutt tells him, it's over. But Krang laughs. You really think I'm on the same frequency as my soldiers? Either I get you, Doctor, or I kill this one! Seeing no other option, Honeycutt gives himself up. While the turtles try to stop Krang, he kicks them aside and he teleports out with Honeycutt as he says goodbye to his friends. Mikey looks at the smoke. Whoa! Crazy day! And Raph puts his hand on Mikey's shoulder. You ain't kidding, bro. The people of Neutrino thank the turtles, and Mikey even gets a kiss from the princess before they teleport back into the sewers in front of April and Casey. Splinter comes out overjoyed that his sons have returned. While they may have saved another world, the battle is only beginning as Shredder's plans are about to begin and Krang is far from done. Next up is City Fall Part 1, and that is one of my favorite stories with the IDW TMNT run. Now, what do you guys think of this story? Do you like the different takes that they have on the turtles? And if you do, leave me a comment down below and give this video a like. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Comic Story and Twitter at Comic Story, and I'll see you next time right here.